Welcome to the Lehigh Valley with the spooky stories. We have another spooky story for you involving Polka King of the Lehigh Valley himself, Robbie Lawrence. Well, hi everybody, Robbie Lawrence here. I guess you could call me the Polka Prince of the Lehigh Valley and uh, also a close friend or a personal friend of George Wacker, at least I hope so after all this. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to share with all of you, because I know he's doing this segment on ghost stories in Bethlehem. I have a real life ghost story that happened in the a spot that you never would have imagined. This happened August 2011 at the corner right over there of Lewis Street and Lafayette Avenue in North Bethlehem, right here, okay? So every Saturday morning, I wanna see if I can get away from the wind, so every Saturday morning, what I usually do is I go out and ride my bike, okay? And I did that. I was still in high school at the time, and this was maybe about 7.30 on a Saturday morning. So what happened was I turned this corner right here. You can see it right here uh, on Lewis Street, turned, made a left here onto Lafayette. And as I was coming up Lafayette Avenue over here, I couldn't help but notice. Oh, by the way, the other thing too is it was not sunny. It was very cloudy and foggy that morning. It was very cloudy and foggy. So I come up this street here and I happen to notice these two girls. They must have been like maybe three or four years old. Okay, they both had blonde ponytails were wearing overalls they didn't look like they were from like n now time period okay they looked like they were from maybe early to mid 80s okay and they were they were both riding on these uh they were twins and they were both riding on these plastic little tykes bicycles i'm sure you remember them if you grew up in the 80s and 90s they were all over the place i know i had one and uh they were just uh, on the sidewalk over here. And there were a few things that happened during this time frame with these girls, okay, I, that I was noticing. First of all, it was 7.30 in the morning. No parents around at all, and it was like just about ready to rain. So I thought, well, this is really odd. And not only that, so I figured, let's, let's go ahead and let's watch. So sure enough, I watched from a distance and they were moving so slowly. They were moving so slowly and it looked like they were having a good time and all that, you know. But the one thing that I had really noticed that was quite interesting to me was no matter how close I got to them, I never saw their faces. I never once saw their faces. They were turned against me the entire time. And not only that, no matter how close I got to them, because I could obviously tell that they were, you know, making a racket over there, I could not hear a single sound that they made. So I proceeded to just sit right here on the curb here on my bike, and I was watching them a little bit, a little bit longer. And eventually I thought, well, this is really strange. So what's going to happen? So what happened was I decided that I was going to watch them go all the way up to the corner up here. So now we're on the corner of, ooh, that's a nice Lincoln. Uh, now we're on the corner of, I guess this is West Boulevard, no, this is South Boulevard and Lafayette Avenue now. So what happened was they were right over there on this sidewalk, okay, on the opposite side of the street. I watched them continue up, okay, and what happened was, now this is a very, I, I have to try to explain this as best as I possibly could. So. You see where things get out of view, like where that corner, where that car is, and then when you make the left, when you make a left, if you're, if you're uh, making a left-hand turn on the sidewalk, and then like once the house obstructs your view, okay? So what happened was they did just that. And so the one twin girl did that, and I tried really hard to look at their front the fronts of their faces, but I could not. So the one girl decides to, of course, move left behind the house to the point of where I can't see her anymore. And then the other girl did just the same thing. But just before the second twin went, there was somehow like this ray of sunlight that was uh, 
that just started coming out of nowhere. Mind you, I said it was foggy and cloudy that morning. It was foggy and cloudy, and the front was moving out at that particular time. 7.30 in the morning, okay? Just before that girl, that second girl, hit that left-hand turn where I could no longer see her in view, this ray of sunlight where I should have seen her face obstructs her, her face, her facial features. I could not see it. It was just like this glow from the side profile from where I was standing right here. So I saw this and I was like, OMG. I think I just saw two ghosts. So I decided, so I was sitting right here. I was sitting right at this spot at this point, And I decided to go up as fast as I possibly could. It took me maybe about five seconds to do so, to look down that section of, uh, I guess this is West Boulevard, yes, of West Boulevard here, or South Boulevard, excuse me. And sure enough, that's what I saw. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And what I did was I made sure to scale up and down the whole street here to see if there was a garage door open or a front door open or anything like that where they could have just ducked in easily. Well, guess what? I couldn't find a damn thing. So I, I, that is an event I can't explain. I mean, I was on my bike. I was outside in pure broad daylight. Uh, I don't think I was daydreaming, but uh, if any of you that live in this area. This happened in August of 2011. If any of you know of any twin girls that used to live here, or if you know of any stories where like maybe something gruesome happened around here back in the late 70s, early 80s, from what I'm guessing, please let me know because that, that would make for, a good, uh, make for a good ghost story. I don't know if anyone else ever saw these twin girls, but it would be nice to know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I won't bore you any longer. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Thank you to my personal friend, Robbie Lawrence, for that scary story. And stay tuned for some more scary stories from me. I've had it with love.